Hi, good morning. How are you doing on this Tuesday? Um, hopefully it's going to be a beautiful day again. So how are you doing today? It's great to be here. So hi, um, please say hi, let me know where you're, oh, get rid of that notification. Um, say hi if you're watching the replay, um, use the hashtag replay. Can't get my words out today. Um, let me know where you are in the country or in the world. Um, and it's great to actually see you. Technology is working today. My internet is back up and running, so it's all really, really good. Um, I'd love to actually answer all of your questions. So as we're going along today, um, please feel free to, in the comments, or even drop me a message, any comments that you've got, because that's the whole point. I'm here to help. Um, so as I say, let me know if anything comes up for you, um, or if you want anything, you know, clarifying a little bit more then we can do that so as I say just drop me a message um, or a comment below so welcome to this episode of Mompreneur Magic and I'm really excited to be sharing some you know practical tips tricks strategies um, that you can easily implement into your business um, today during this session because I don't want to waffle on it's these sessions are bite-sized, to the point, um, you know, we're busy, our lives are busy. So I just wanna give you some very simple things because if I do anything too complicated or it's gonna take you too much time, you're not going to do it. And it's just gonna add to your never-ending list of things to do. So it's all very simple, uh, bite-sized practical tips that anybody, regardless of what business you do, whether you are running a service or a product-based business, it's something that we can all um, implement into our business. So today I'm going to be talking about five ways that you are making it hard for you and your business. Yes, you, I see you, you're making it hard. And we're going to be looking at a few of the ways that you're doing that, but also how you can flip that round and make it so that it isn't hard and you can turn it around. Okay. So again, get involved, ask questions. I'm here to answer them for you. Um, so comment or drop me a message. Okay. So the first numero uno. And... This is actually, I've put this one first for a reason because it's actually a really, really big one. And what we tend to do is when we think of running our business, um, when we think of all the stuff that we've got to do, because you know, it's a huge, huge list, it tends to be that we focus on step 946. You know, we think far off down the road, and really, all we need to do is step one. We just need to take one step forward. And it's that that's all we need to do. So we don't have to worry about the end result. We'll get there. We're just taking a step by step by step by step by step. And this is a biggie because, as I say, a lot of people, especially mums, get so caught up in this. They're like, you know, oh, no, I need to be here. Well, that's fine. You can get there. Let's just start here. And then we take our step. And the way that I actually um, bring it back and explain it is like a baby. Now, when babies um, learn to walk for the first time, can you see the analogy? Stops. Um, they don't just suddenly, well, normally, they don't suddenly just get up and walk. It's a slow process. So, you know, they uh, start by learning to stand up on their own. They learn by, um, you know, cruising along the furniture. Um, when they are standing up on their own, they're doing it with support. Then they stand up without support. And then, you know, eventually, once they've worked around, you know, cruising around the furniture, it's a tentative step. And then two or three tentative steps. And then before you know it, they're doing those tentative steps across the room. And then they do it, and then they run. And then that's it, you can't keep them still. But they don't just get up and walk and you have to think the same for your business um, you know you can't just get up and go straight away just take that step just learn and you know think of it like a baby learning to walk it's just taking one step and then another and before you know it you will be at step 946 and you will be at your goal 
and your destination whatever it is you know whether it's um, a goal that you're trying to reach or if it's a big massive project that you're doing um, whether you are launching a business or a new product or website or it doesn't matter do step one that's all you need to do it's it's don't worry about 946 number one okay and as I say the reason I put that as the first thing is because it's so big and I don't want you to fall into that trap so please bring it back yes by all means do um you know you've got your massive list I um you know I, I tell you to have that list and we'll talk about that in um in a couple of minutes um but just focus on one step at a time okay so that's the first way that you're making it hard for yourself okay number two <laughs> this is a biggie as well is actually being too hard on yourself when things go wrong because i don't want to burst your bubble things will go wrong the shit will hit the van at some stage um regardless of how well organized we are how um you know we, we we have our shit together something will go wrong at some stage and there's no point in um you know beating yourself up about it or feeling guilty about it or anything like that it's uh you know it's it's just what it is okay so instead of you know adding to your guilt and oh God, i can't do this i knew i couldn't do this you know and instead of those self-talk um voices that are telling you you're not good enough you're telling that are telling you you know why on earth did you think you could do this flip it round. And actually, do you know what? Yeah, some things haven't gone right. But what has? What has gone right? What have you done really, really well? Because I bet you, you don't celebrate those. I bet you, I see you, you only focus on the things that you've done wrong. How about we flip it and focus on the things that we do right? So think about those tasks that you've ticked off the list. Think about that big, massive project that you've actually got finished. Think about that um, new product you've launched or think about the uh, the website that you've launched or rebranded. Um, you know, whether it's you've set up a Facebook page for the first time. Whether it's, um, as I say, just getting your first website and it's just a couple of pages. Tick it off. That's a celebration. It is. Um, you know, whether you have made a sale, your first ever sale, do a little happy dance. Whether you have had your best launch ever for a new product happy dance fantastic that's an achievement so what if something slightly went wrong in the the launch phase just just celebrate it um you know whether it's the the little wins as well as the big massive projects um you know getting your newsletter out on time um you know getting a blog post up um sorting out your filing it doesn't matter what it is don't focus on the things that go wrong. Flip it and what's gone right. And I can guarantee you, if you actually did a little exercise where you had a piece of paper and just for argument's sake, write down on the left-hand side what's gone wrong, what's happened. Now on the right-hand side of that paper, write down everything that's gone right. Now there might be one, two, three things on the left um, gone wrong list but I bet you a lot of money that right hand list of all the stuff that's gone right is a hell of a lot bigger and you'll probably run out of paper. OK, so if sometimes your self-talk is um, a bit too much, do that exercise of just writing it down because it will it's um, evidence. I suppose is what I'm trying to say. It's evidence in black and white. You can't refute that evidence. It's there in front of you. And as I say, you can't refute it. It's there. So do that exercise and it will soon, um, you know, shush those, those voices in your head. Okay, so that's number two. Don't be hard on yourself. Don't beat yourself up when things do inevitably go wrong. Okay, so as I say, that was step two. Number three, three, is about overwhelm. 
and letting the, the mistake, the ways you're making it hard of yourself is letting overwhelm take over. Okay, now, you know, it's so easy when you're running a business, when you're trying to be mom, um, all of these different roles that we have, you know, whether it's taxi driver, um, chef, <laughs> entertainer, um, and then as I say, trying to run a business as well, um, we have a huge task list that's never ending. And it's great, you know, we love it. Um, but it can soon lead to overwhelm central. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to go from overwhelm over here to clarity and focus. And there's three very easy things that you can do to get there. Um, the first one is to do what I call a brain dump. You've heard me talk about this lots and lots and lots. Um, and it's very simple. It's a download of everything that's going on in here onto paper. I do recommend that you write it because it's just proven that it's a little bit easier um, and more beneficial. I'm not going to blot on about the, the scientific stuff, but it's, it's just proven to be better. So whatever is going on up here, whatever task, whatever... Um, project you want to do, if there's any blog post ideas, product ideas, anything that's going on in your head, whether it's from a personal point of view or a business point of view. So, you know, do you need to uh, start looking for car insurance renewals? Do you need to book into the dentist or the doctor um, or the hairdressers? Um, and then from a business point of view, what is it you need to do? Is it your newsletter? Do you need to rebrand your newsletter or launch a newsletter? Do you want to rebrand or launch a website? Or do a Facebook group? Or um, launch a new product? Get your filing up to date. Get organised, start getting a planning system in place. Uh, what, whatever it is. I have a brain dump, I regularly do it. And it's normally five, six pages long, I think, on average. Um, and what happens is that once I've downloaded it, it's then freed up so much space in my brain to come up with new ideas or to think through some of my ideas that I've already got um, downloaded. So it's freed up space. Um, for example, I'm launching and running at the um, beginning of October. I'm lost track of the day, so. Um, a brand new course. So on my brain dump, it was everything that I had to do for that course. So it was um, what content did I want to include? Um, how did I want to organise it? So I've organised it into seven modules. Um, how long did I want to run it for? So it's like 10 weeks. It's, it's, it's organised. Um, what did I want to include in each module? Uh, what checklist, templates it was included? Um, obviously the sales page, all the different um, delivery mechanism of the course delivery, because it's an online course, um, what, um, let's say, launch marketing activities did I need to do. So this was a big, a big project. And there was lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff that needed to be done. But because I downloaded it, it actually... A lot less overwhelming and then what I did once I've done my brain dump and once you've done your brain dump is you need to prioritize that list so um, just a couple of highlighters that's all I do um, and you need to highlight your top priority what you must do and to determine what that is I'll, I'll let you in on a little secret it's not the filing it's your top priority is anything that will um, how to bring money into the business, so money making activities specifically, or anything that will help you take you closer to your goals, your ultimate goals. But that's your top priority, money making activities. Your second priority is the ones that were really just almost the step behind the money making activities, but that will also um, help you to move you closer to your goals. And then everything else is just, just left for now. And what you'll find with the stuff that isn't highlighted is that you could either um, delegate it, just leave it, or delete it. Because not everything needs to be done. Not every idea in your head needs to be actioned. Not everything in your head um, is a good idea sometimes. 
uh, things change. You know, you might suddenly think, actually, no, that's not right for me. I don't want to do that. And that's okay. It's really okay. So prioritise that list. Um, and then once you've got that list and you know what are your money-making activities, you know what are the um, top priority for you, you need to break it down into chunks of time. And I always recommend to my clients either 5, 10 and 30 minute chunks um, for your tasks. So um, then you've got a list of tasks that will only take 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes. So depending on how much time you've got available, you have got straight away a list of the tasks that you can do. So if you only have got, you know, five minutes, you can do a quick five minute task. If you've only got 10 minutes, then again, you can do a 10 minute task. And then if you've got more time, you can focus on the big chunkier um, tasks that you've got. So for example, um, at the moment with martial arts, because of the um, restrictions with social distancing and all this COVID um, restrictions, I have to sit outside now. I can't sit in the academy watching my girls train. I have to sit outside in my car. So now there are, and it's 45 minutes lesson instead of an hour. Um, but I've got 45 minutes to do some work. And if they've got two classes, straight away, I've got an hour and a half that I can be doing that normally I would be sat watching them because I love watching them um, because then, you know, I can help them at home. Not that I'm any good, but I can sort of keep an eye on what they need help with. Um, I've now got that time and I can do what it's actually been really productive, to be fair. Um, so what areas have you got that you could do those tasks? Um, and then, as I say, because you've broken it down into those time frames, it's easy for you to do. OK, so number three of how you're making it hard for you is overwhelm. So please do not let overwhelm take over. OK, number four, this is always a quickie, but it's important, is thinking that you have to do it on your own. You don't have to be Billy No Mates. You really don't. You, um, you can have a team behind you. And this includes... Um, uh, on a personal level for your personal life and for business. So from a business point of view, you could have, and I do recommend a virtual assistant. So that will, they, they can do a whole range of tasks. I'm not going to bore you with the details. Just look up virtual assistant. Um, they can help you with social media. They can help you with, you know, sending out newsletters. They can help you uh, managing clients. They can help you um, do some bookkeeping. Have a look for a virtual assistant. There's lots of different ones. They all do different things. Um, but I do recommend, highly recommend a virtual assistant, even if you're just starting at sort of a couple of hours a month. And then what time that you free up, um, so, so the time that you spend on a virtual assistant, um, that time freed up, you need to make sure you focus on the money-making activities. Okay? And that's all it is. You don't focus on any other general stuff. It's money-making activities only. Okay. Um, and then secondly, from business point of view, think about, say, a coach or a mentor. Um, you know, these are the people who are already walking the path that you want to walk. Um, learn the shortcuts. Learn the steps to avoid. Um, I do that. I'm a coach and a mentor. I have one. Um, because it, it, it's a really good, it's a really good decision. Um, and my business has improved so much as a direct result of that. So think about a mentor yourself. Then from a personal point of view, um, you could have a cleaner. It's amazing. Um, you know, there's no explanation there. Um, and then, you know, you have to have some form of childcare. Um, regardless of the age, unless obviously they're teenagers and it's a little bit different, um, but whether it's um, you know partner or family helping out a little bit, um, whatever it is, you need. It, there's no point in me going into too many too much detail about that. It's it's what's right for for you and your business um, and for your life. Okay, so that's number four, and then the final thing, number five, of how you're making it um, harder for you and your business is you are comparing yourself to others. 
I don't know why we do this. <clears throat> it's it's not a case of keeping up with the Joneses or anything like that because it's oh, it's a waste of time and energy. And you know, you've got to realize that especially on social media, what you see and what is reality are two different things. Um, you know, most people they put up um it's like I, I like to compare it to like a, a movie trailer. So any trailers you see for new films, they put the best bits. They put the bits that are gonna get you to go, oh wow, that looks amazing. I wanna go and see that. They don't put the you know the, the boring bit to begin with, um, or anything like that, because you know that the film is not gonna be an hour and a half, two hours of this amazing all the time. But the trailer is the highlights of it, the best bits. And social media, your friends and your family and other people, you're only going to see the highlights. You're only going to see the good things. People aren't going to share that, you know, they haven't got their shit together. You're not going to see things are, you know, that it's all it's not all rosy. Okay. And, you know, these things, it's it, it have a look at your own social media um what do you put out do you only put the good bits um so trying to compare yourself to other people that you see is not reality it, it it's not and it's a difficult um thing to do so please please don't do it um it, it's just not it's not worth it it really isn't. Um, so, you know, the, the way to do this is when you are looking, even from a business point of view, you might look at somebody and think, oh my God, they're amazing. Um, they've got all this stuff together. Um, don't worry about that. Think about how you can get things to work for you. Okay, so don't compare. How can you organise your workspace to be better? How can you work um, organise your workspace to be inspirational for you? Um, you know, uh, what time of the day, you know, you might think that you've got to work nine till three, you've got to do this, 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 because everybody tells you to. No, you do what is right for you. It is your business. It's your rules. So when are you the most productive? When is the best time of the day? Or is it the night that you are better? That's that. Um, Yes, obviously, if you've got clients who need to talk to them in the daytime, that's fine. But, you know, you might find that you do a lot of your best work on the night or first thing in the morning or whatever it is. So find out um, what time of the day you are more productive and the best time um, for you to do your work. And then just, as I say, don't sweat it. Um, yeah, don't compare yourself to others. I mean, just going through the five ways quickly now. Um, don't focus on nine, step 946. Don't let overwhelm take over. Don't feel guilty when things don't work. Um, you know, you're not alone and you don't have to compare yourself to others. It's, it's really not necessary. Be um, the best you that you can be. Uh, it's, again, it's your business, it's your rules. Make it work for you. That's the only thing that you need to be doing. So they are the five ways that you are making it harder for you in your business. Um, go away, do some of the, even if you just do the, the brain dump um, and, you know, thinking about who you can get on board um, your team. Uh, please feel free to share this with any friends who you think might find this useful, some of these tips, tricks and strategies. And I hope you can join me next week where um, I've had a few questions about specifically homeschooling and um, balancing the business. So I'm going to look a little bit more in detail on that uh, next week. Um, but if you have got any specific questions, um, anything that's, you know, challenging you right now that you'd like some, some support on, please message me or drop me a comment and um of what's what's stressing you out at the moment and then we can do a an episode to cover that particular thing okay so as i say that's the end of this episode enjoy the rest of your day and i will talk to you soon take care bye